Attorney General Healy, your investigation uh, revealed that McKinsey helped drug companies increase opioid sales and fight against meaningful regulation of opioids. Based on your investigation, did McKinsey advise Purdue to undermine federal drug safety measures, and if so, how? Thank you, Congresswoman. The answer to that is quite simply, absolutely. And it is infuriating. And it spanned many years. If you go back to 2008, there was a time when the FDA was actually trying to create a safety program for OxyContin and impose stricter standards. And at that time, McKinsey was actively coaching Purdue on how to band together with other opioid companies to fight against those stricter safety requirements. The FDA never implemented the stricter requirements. And of course, the opioid epidemic just kept getting worse. I submitted today McKinsey's own email from their very own files as the first exhibit uh, with, my, with my testimony. Um, from their own mouths, marketing to Purdue and the Sacklers that their relationship basically with the FDA was something that would benefit Purdue and its bottom line. Now, you move forward to 2013, <clears throat> another example. This is at a time when Americans were overdosing and dying of, of opioids. McKinsey is telling the Sacklers to, quote, turbocharge OxyContin sales by relentlessly targeting doctors who wrote the most dangerous prescriptions for the most patients at the highest doses possible, a calculated effort to specifically target those prescribers. This is from McKinsey as a way to boost more oxy sales by Purdue. McKinsey consultants went so far as to actually get in the car with Purdue sales representatives to go pitch opioids to doctors. And McKinsey went to Purdue's national sales meeting to push their scheme to sell more drugs. We found that, <clears throat> that McKinsey time and time again worked directly with Purdue to oppose efforts directed at safety and knowing what was happening in terms of people becoming sick, overdosing, and dying. McKinsey designed schemes to get more people on opioids, and as a result, more people suffered and died. And I want to uh, raise something as well that I find really appalling. One thing that we uncovered is that as thousands of people in America were dying, McKinsey was briefing Purdue on ways to salvage the opioid business with health insurance companies because there was more pressure being brought to bear as more recognition that these prescription opioids, which in Massachusetts alone have accounted for two thirds of all overdoses in our state since 2009, that, that while this is happening and, and more focus and attention is being brought to bear, McKinsey's advising Purdue on how to, how to deal with this, and in particular concerns raised by insurance companies. So here's what McKinsey proposes. I don't want to they actually propose paying a rebate to the insurers for each patient who overdoses. Their analysis showed that paying a rebate could be a, quote, attractive option for Purdue if the payment was in the range of $6,000 to $14,000 for each patient who was harmed. The money wouldn't go to the patient but it would go to the insurance company to encourage them to keep paying for Purdue's drugs. Well, we don't believe that this rebate proposal ever got traction. It is evidence that McKinsey shouldn't be in this business and it is emblematic of the kind of activity that McKinsey engaged in with Purdue. And to answer your question, it absolutely undermined public safety. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sternfels, our committee found that McKinsey made more than $140 million consulting for the FDA in 2008, but McKinsey has never publicly disclosed how much it made working for private opioid companies. How much money was your firm paid by Purdue and other opioid manufacturers? Uh, Congresswoman, I don't have that number today. If that's of interest, okay. I'm happy to, uh, to dig that up and come back to this committee. Fine. Uh, uh, Attorney General Healy, how much money was McKinsey paid by Purdue? Do you know? Forgive me, I was on meeting. $86 million. 
$86 million, that's a lot of money, and that's just one of four companies that they were paid uh, privately. And we know what kind of advice that brought uh, with that money, advice on how to fight federal regulation, increase its own bottom line, knowing that it would lead to more opioid overdoses. Uh, I, I, I have many questions, but my time has almost expired, and I want to stick very strictly with the five minutes because A.G. Healy has a 11 o'clock leave and I want more people to get to her. But Mr. Sternfels, can you uh, please uh, make a commitment that you will give to this committee the documents that we have requested by Friday? Uh, Chairwoman, um, as we've made um, uh, very clear, uh, our intent is to work fully with this committee uh, to answer all the scope of questions that you've answered, uh, and we'll continue to do that. Um, so I, I think as we um, had indicated going into this, we're not done on answering your questions, and you have my Thank commitment you. that we'll continue Thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. Very briefly, will you commit to uh, turning over the complete client list and staffing information the committee requested in November, in our November letter by this Friday? We'll continue to keep working with you, uh, Congresswoman, on the questions that you need. Our team is not disbanding on helping answer your questions. Well, the families destroyed by the opioid epidemic deserve accountability from your company, and we will not stop until we get it. My time has expired. I now recognize the gentlelady from North Carolina, Mrs. Fox. 